Perfect. So uh, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, my name is Rebecca Flipsey. I'm the Marketing and Enrollment Coordinator here at Sheboygan Christian. For those of you who might not know me, uh, we're very excited for this opportunity to share more with you about Sheboygan Christian School. And uh, most importantly, we hope that you'll leave this webinar feeling confident and at peace with the transition to high school. And more importantly, Sheboygan Christian School as that school for your child. So we look forward to this time of introducing you to a few of our teachers and sharing about the important mission here at Sheboygan Christian. Um, so before we go through the full overview of what tonight will look like, I would actually like to hand it off to my colleague, Rudy Gesh, uh, who will be opening us in a word of prayer. Good evening, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us. Let's, uh, let's pray. Our great and awesome God, we thank you for um, this evening. We thank you for this event. We thank you for uh, the unique gift of technology in, in the day and age that uh, we're in. Thank you that we're able to meet, even if not in physical proximity. And Lord, we know that where two or three are gathered, uh, there you are uh, as well. And uh, Lord, we're, we're gathered in cyberspace tonight. And so we pray that uh, you be with us. Thank you, Lord, that uh, all of creation is yours, including cyberspace. And uh, we pray that uh, you be with us in this evening, be with our families um, who are uh, earnestly seeking great uh, school choices for their children. We pray, Lord, that um, we would present uh, your mission and vision uh, for Sheboygan Christian School. And uh, Lord, that you would uh, have that our, the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart would be pleasing in your sight. We love you, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Rudy. So before we begin, I'd love to give you an overview of what tonight will look like. Uh, one thing that we had hoped to start this evening with was a student-led campus tour video. And we did work hard on optimizing it and getting it ready for this webinar. But after viewing it, we felt like the quality still wasn't quite to the level we would like you guys to see it at. So Unfortunately, right now we are not going to show that video, but I do plan on tomorrow sending you an email with a link to the video in a very high quality way. Um, we just didn't want to give you something that was less than right now. Um, so, so next we'll be talking about the history of Sheboygan Christian School. We'll be talking about our mission, vision, and values, how it's four years of preparation and how important that is to us, an opportunity to meet a few of our teachers, our extra extracurricular programs, and actually, most importantly to us is the Q&A time. It helps us understand what's important to you and answer questions you might have. Um, so one thing, if you're not used to the webinar format, if you uh, look at the bottom of your screen, there's a button called Q&A. And at any point during this webinar, if you have a question, you can click that button and submit the question. Uh, one thing with that is we might not be able to answer the question right away but we will be saving all of those questions for the end of the night. Um, so don't, don't worry, it won't be missed at all. And I'll have Rudy make sure that we've covered all those questions and answers at the end. Um, so we're excited for that time, um, but I would love to now hand it off to Ann Steenweik, who will talk a little bit more on history. Good evening. Thank you for the privilege of your um, time this evening. We're so glad that you could join us tonight. Um, I am Ann Steenweik. I am the Director of Academics and Instruction here at SCS and the Head of School. And I would just like to share with you a little bit about our school and what, what specifically we're all about. Our school was actually founded way back in 1898. So we have a strong history and a very firm foundation um, in our school. Many generations have been through this school and um, some of them are actually on this webinar tonight. So I'm, I'm excited for you to meet others who have been a part of this school. One of the things that we're especially proud of is just our position um, in the city, not only did we have um, an elementary school start in 1898, 
but we also had a high school that started in 1969. And just about six years ago, our schools merged, the elementary school and the high school merged to form um, what we have now as a preschool through grade 12 school. And we're excited about that. We have approximately about 315, 16 kids um, this year and we continue to grow. So as you can see, we have um, quite a, a strong history and a great community of supporters here in our school. One of the things that we believe is really important as you consider our school is that you understand what our mission is and understand um, how our mission, how we live out our mission every day in our school, just to make sure that it's the right fit for you. Um, our mission is broken down into three sections that I'd like to just talk a little bit more about tonight. The first one is about partnership, and it's partnership with the Christian community, which means not only you, but also the church and all of the community members that are in your, your students' lives right now. So that means we work with the church, we work with you as parents, we work with families, um, youth pastors will come into the school as well. And we believe it's really important that we are raising up your children with you um, together to help them to become more independent as they're getting ready to fly off um, into um, the real world in four years. So um, that partnership is really important to us. The second part is um, integrating um, academic excellence with Christ-centered learning and biblical worldview. We believe that it's really important that um, our academics are rooted and founded with biblical truth. And as we go through, as students go through from freshman through senior year, they are um, constantly shown the word of God through every subject and every area that they study. Um, we also teach in the, um, the framework of a teaching for transformation, which is the framework where um, students learn about real people with real needs doing real work. So in those situations, um, in, within our curriculum, we have students going out um, into the community, um, working with real people who have real needs and doing real work with, um, and you'll see some of that, our, our teachers will talk a little bit more about that this evening. And then the last part is um, preparing hearts and minds for service in God's world. This is really um, what our vision ab is about. It's not just about prepping them for the ACT and ACT scores and getting them ready for, for college and career, but it's also about preparing students um, to fulfill their God-given purpose. We believe each one of our students is called in a special way. And we believe that part of our job in these four years is to help them understand what that calling is and to help them um, figure out how to be um, in God's big story um, as they discover what their calling is. So um, we are in our mission, preparing students to be a part of this kingdom work, impacting the world for Christ. Um, in addition to our mission and our vision, we have several core values that we live by here in our school. And I'll just briefly share about these because I think th this is something that's really important for you to take a look at in terms of, does this align with, with what you are interested in for your, for your student? Um, obviously, we're a school first and we're going to pursue academic excellence no matter, what the, no matter what we do. But in addition to that, we believe that it's really important to develop the Christian mind. Basically, that's about teaching kids how to think in the context of biblical truth. We believe that truth is foundational, and we want kids to think about um, the world and problem solving in that way. We are also working on cultivating spiritual growth, and we do that through a variety of ways, including um, teaching kids how to worship and when to worship and how to be a part of developing worship and reflection. 
Um, the next two really go um, together. They often go hand in hand, encouraging biblical self-image as well as building strong social bonds. Um, in the context of high school at that developmental level, self-image and their social life is very well connected. And we believe that it's important to teach kids that their identity is in Christ and um, to be able to see their relationships through that um, and to build strong social relationships in the context of, of their identity in Christ. And then the last two also go together, involving the supporting community, which includes you, the church, and other um, Christian organizations and um, organizations within our community. We, um, you will find that throughout the four years, our students are very engaged in the community. Um, not only are we supported by the community, community members coming in, such as our youth leaders, um, family members, and um, different supporters throughout the community, but we also give out. We support the greater community by serving them. And we're connected with several organizations all throughout the, the county. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit um, throughout the presentation. Thank you, Anne. Next, I would like to hand it off to Bryce DeRuth. Well, good evening. Uh, welcome, and thank you again for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is uh, Bryce uh, DeRuth, and I serve SES as the assistant principal. And I, along with many of the presenters tonight, uh, am a graduate of SES, and that was way back in yeah, well, we don't really have too much time to talk about that. So let's just move on to what I really need to talk to you about tonight. And that is uh, two things. And there's two things I want to focus on. Number one is how are we preparing your child for today and tomorrow? And secondly, how are we helping to ensure that they will be successful here? So historically, schools have done a pretty poor job of preparing students for their post-secondary plans. Uh, if it was up to students to figure them, it, it was always up to students to figure things out for themselves. And, and I remember my own experiences here at SCS, they pretty much stayed within these four walls. I didn't get out, I didn't move, or I didn't get into the community. I wasn't a part of different uh, organizations outside of these four walls. And so, you know, you've probably have heard the phrase like children are our future. While we agree with that, we think that's really just only half the truth, because not only are they the, our future, but they are also our present right now. And what are we going to do about that right now? So when you view it that way, it becomes clear that we literally only have four years left to educate, nurture, uh, uh, develop and partner with you in preparing your child for whatever comes after the, the four years at, here at SCS. So in essence, we have a huge sense of urgency that we don't want to waste. And so this is the four years of preparation. So as a result, we've set up a system that addresses both the present and the future. And our preparations and experiences begin long before one is finished at SCS. And so it, it often starts at uh, the beginning of middle school and continues through high school as students are a part of a process called academic and career planning or ACP for short. And so this process begins in earnest as a freshman. And so uh, when you look at the, the first thing that happens is two times a month, students meet in their advisory groups, which is a, is a group of about eight to 12 students comprised of freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And so during this time, students work through a process of helping them understand their own strengths, their skills, uh, weaknesses, areas of need. Uh, and so this, uh, this is done through completing uh, interest, interest inventories and other um, uh, ways to go about figuring out what, what activities and uh, what, what skills, talents do that they have. And so really this first step, if you fast forward one slide, it's about who am I? And what am I, you know, what, what am I good at? What am, what am I strong in? Uh, and then as a sophomore, students now knowing what their skills, interests, talents, strengths are, they start exploring different uh, jobs and careers that are aligned to their strengths. And so uh, they'll be doing a variety of things of looking up uh, whether it's colleges, whether uh, what actually, what, what types of areas that they might be uh, aligned with their strengths and their talents. And then as a juniors, once they know what their interests, strengths are, and they've explored different jobs and careers, 
they'll set up job shadows and start exploring uh, what, where they would need to go in order to um, achieve those different career uh, goals that they might have. And so then they're going to plan for that. And then finally, as a senior, they get to go and do it. So they, they might start working towards applying for schools, applying for jobs, writing applications, their personal statements. And, and so this next slide uh, is basically a graphic that describes this process of the who am I, uh, how, you know, exploring various, various things, planning on it, and then going. So an additional area that we were focusing on, as Anne mentioned is, uh, earlier tonight, it was about engagement and impact today. What are we doing today to help your child uh, impact this world and be a part of this world? So one of the things we would think about is that we would think that, you know, we would be foolish to think that if you just sit in this classroom and listen to instruction all day long, that's magically going to prepare them uh, for when they walk out of, the, out of these doors. And that's just a poor understanding of how we learn and develop. And instead, we, we know that the best approach is getting students engaged and part of our world today. And one way do, we do this is encouraging students to apply for youth apprenticeship during their juniors and senior years. And so if you look at that graphic when you're planning, they may start uh, going out uh, onto job sites, uh, working uh, for a few hours a day, a couple of days a week, uh, and working with professionals that are in their areas of interest. Um, and so we also have uh, service learning opportunities and requirements for students. Uh, and this encourages students to be actively involved in our communities uh, in which they can use their skills and strengths. And so those, the youth apprenticeship, the service learning opportunities, these are just a few of the ways that we try to help students become engaged with their future careers, um, but to do that right now. Now, the next thing is, how are we going to ensure that they're successful here at school? And it, we can look at the next slide and it says, we have two responses from a student. Some may say, oh, well, the, you know, an incoming student uh, may say, oh, they might be the perfect student. They ask questions, they participate in everything, they follow through in their work, uh, simply stated, they're perfect in everything they do. And surprisingly, that's just not the case usually. Rather, what often happens is students take a different approach and hope that number one, no one sees anything. Number two, no one hears them do anything. No one says anything to them. They just simply try to blend in with everything around them and assume that things will just kind of fall into place or hope that they'll fall into place. And we know that th that doesn't always work out the best. So then we try to put in some uh, systems in place to address student needs. Uh, so first, as we've mentioned earlier, we have a system in place that uh, places your child as a part of a small group with an advisor. And that advisory group meets twice a week. And what they do during that time is they review schoolwork. They, uh, your child would meet with their teachers, they catch up on assignments, and they work through any other academic needs um, uh, that they may have at that time. Uh, in, addition, in, in addition to the advisory groups, uh, Anna and I work together to uh, run a missing assignments report, and uh, we have progress reports on, on a weekly basis. And this allows us to continually follow up with your child or any other student about their schoolwork and their progress at SCS so that they just won't fall through the cracks, that, they, that we're continually helping and supporting them. And finally, there's time twice a week for students to have kind of a short study hall. And again, this is other opportunities for students to meet with their teachers. So in addition to the support systems that we have in place, like I just mentioned, we also look for opportunities for those that want to expand their skills. Uh, and we offer uh, dual college credits, uh, basically getting credit for high school classes as well as college credits. Uh, and we also have AP classes that we can offer to students. Um, and then the, the final thing is, is that we, we've tried to set up um, times for or opportunities for students to help other students through tu tutoring. Uh, and then Anne and myself can both set those uh, opportunities up for high school students, either to help other high school students or uh, to help whether it's middle school. And uh, then next year, we can even do that for elementary students. So that's in it in a nutshell and what, how we're trying to prepare your child for today and tomorrow through that ACP of uh, figuring out who they are, exploring different things, planning, and then going, 
And then as well as all the different supports that we have in place here at SCS to help your child out. And uh, so now I'm gonna pass it back uh, to Becca. Thank you, Bryce. Now that we've had a chance to hear a little bit from our administration, I wanted to switch things up a bit and start introducing you to our teaching staff. Uh, so we are actually going to start with Chris Hendricks. Chris, if you wouldn't mind starting now. And there we go. Sure, yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, thank you, Becca. It's a, it's a privilege to be a part of this um, uh, webinar tonight. And I just want to start by saying my name is Chris Hendricks, and I am a 1990 graduate. And I have um, been teaching here about 20 years uh, alongside uh, John Andringa in the science department. And I just want to talk a little bit about the science program and then a few other things I'm, I'm passionate about here at Sheboygan Christian. Um, first of all, yeah, I get to teach science, and we, we require three credits of science uh, before you can graduate, but we offer a lot more than that. All freshmen come in and take biology, and they'll have me for a year of biology, and then they go into a, a semester of chemistry and a semester of physics their sophomore year. And the, the goal is by that time that we will have covered all of the science standards, and then we have opportunity to, uh, to go in some different directions. We, we also offer AP chemistry, AP physics, AP biology. I teach environmental science and I also teach a course in anatomy and physiology with a, a dissection lab as well. So um, got a lot of cool things going on in science. And I think um, most importantly, I, I just love being able to as, as a believer to take my, my passion um, for, for God's word and, and bring that to the classroom. So I'm very thankful I've been able to do that for as many years as I have. Uh, just a couple other things uh, about what I do. Um, and if you wanna go to the next slide, Rudy, uh, I, I get to be the senior retreat coordinator. And every year we get to bring our seniors up to the North Woods to Silver Birch Ranch. And we hire a speaker to, to challenge the students. We have four sessions together. We have some worship time together, some prayer time together. And then um, in addition to that, if you go to the next slide, we also have um, opportunities for I mean, white water rafting as you see here, but horseback riding and zip lining and tubing and paintballing and a lot of cool stuff. It's, a, it's a, an amazing way to start the school year for the senior class. Um, a lot of good relationships are, are started there and it just really um, helps them get off on the right foot and come back and just be the leaders that they're called to be as we start the school year. Um, I also, get to be involved as a science teacher. I get to bring my environmental science students up to the Sylvania wilderness each fall. And we, we canoe about two hours back to our campsite. We hang out for a few days, we visit some old growth forests, uh, some bogs, do a lot of hiking, a lot of uh, like journaling. And um, I have uh, students uh, involved in helping uh, teach each other as well. If you see in the next slide, Rudy, I have um, a little picture on the left side there of uh, some students um, involved in, in teaching each other. We, we have a lot of great memories from up there. It's a, a chance to engage students in God's creation in a way that many of them have never done before and uh, many of them probably never will again. So I'm very thankful I can be a part of that. And then finally, I just want to mention um, our discovery term. Um, I have the opportunity each year to bring students down to Atlanta, Georgia on a mission trip. And I, I think this is probably one of my my favorite things each year because I get to bring students down to an area where they are really stretched. Um, they go down excited and then it switches to nervousness uh, because we go out on the streets and we hand out um, gloves and hats and mittens and, and lunches uh, and we go to some pretty high poverty areas under bridges and students get a chance to share the gospel and to pray over people. And I, I love watching the, the transformation that takes place over a few days where they go from being really nervous to just getting right out there and doing that. So um, I love getting involved with students outside the classroom as well as inside the classroom. And um, I would definitely like to talk more about any of these things later, but I know I'm out of time. So I'll just turn it back to Becca. Thank you, Chris. You did great. You stayed within your time limit. Um, but I'm really excited to introduce you next to Lisa Abe. Hi, I'm Lisa Abe, and I am a SCS grad or the high school graduate of um, 2008. 
and I love teaching art to the students and surrounding all the art classes, my deep hope for them and their experience in art is that we, me and myself including, will know God as the supreme artist and that I can live out my creative calling as well as help students figure out how they can live out their creative calling to honor and glorify God since we are all made in God's image and we know God is an amazing creator God. They can reflect him in the art that they make and then use that as a way to minister to each other and to the community and reflect and be transformed themselves by reflecting on God's creation and how he is such an orderly God. So for the layout of the classes, Intro to Art is the a first year-long class that's offered, and it gives all students an opportunity to explore many different media. So the first quarter is drawing and then painting, then ceramics and sculpture, and then the last quarter is in design. So here you can see some examples. Um, and then in, yeah, here's some more examples of the design and then also the ceramics as well. That's in the second semester. And after the students take a year long intro to art course, then they're able to pursue any area that they're more interested in in semester advanced art classes. So there's a semester of drawing, a semester of painting, a semester of ceramics and sculpture, and then a semester of design. And I really enjoy teaching these courses because it helps students hone in on different skills and their interests that they particularly enjoyed in intro to art, and they can dive a lot deeper. So you can see some of the ceramics, they get an opportunity to throw on the wheel. And I love seeing the innovation of the students too. This one's using some piping, frosting, uh, bakery stuff to actually squeeze out clay. Um, and then she also created a magazine using um, digital design as well. So they get a taste of graphic design too with the Adobe um, programs. And after, if a student is really, um, continues to be interested in the arts and they took intro a year long and then all of those advanced courses, which are a semester, then they can pursue an independent study. And this really gives them the choice of what they want to focus in on to really improve and refine their skills. So this is one example of a student who is pursuing um, watercolor illustration. And actually she's, she plans on going into graphic design um, and so she's doing some digital media work right now for one of her projects that she created for herself. And then I have some other students that are pursuing more painting. And then this actually was a digital drawing that she did as well. So I enjoy being able to see all the students through all four years if they so choose. And this was one example of what I do for a discovery term is to give students a little bit of a different experience. And so this year they were able to do sort of a service project for our school community and design and create stepping stones for one of the school courtyards. So they looked at the whole story of God's creation through the fall and redemption and restoration and Hopefully these bring a lot of color and beauty to the courtyard and remind the students about how God works through all of the world and through all of time. And we of course celebrate artwork in many different ways, whether it's artwork hanging up in the hallways on a daily basis or bigger art shows. This is an example, this was the digital art show from last year since it was canceled, the in-person one was canceled. Um, just to highlight specific artists that really show a, pas a passion and motivation for creating some spectacular art. Thank you, Lisa. Next up is Hannah Garside. Good evening. Um, just a little bit about myself. My name is Hannah Garside. Um, I have been teaching here at Twin Christian since January of 19. Um, this is my second full year, and I do all the band and choir from fifth grade through 12th grade. Um, so just a little bit about where we are this year. 
for high school, we offer band and choir, both which are ninth through 12th grade. Um, but next year we are planning, Lord willing, we are planning on offering band, choir, and orchestra. So that's something that I'm really excited about. Um, it'll be a new opportunity and it's not something that every school can offer. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I wanted to share a couple of goals that I have. Um, these are goals that I share with my fifth graders all the way up through my seniors. But I have three goals for every single student every year. First and foremost, that students will grow in their faith and knowledge of God specifically through the context of music. Secondly, that students will begin or continue their journey towards becoming independent musicians. And then lastly, that students will develop deeper relationships with each other to create a Christ-like community within their respective musical groups. So obviously all of that looks different with every age, but I think those are really important things to keep in mind. Um, typical schedule for high school right now is we have a 45 minute period every single day. That's the plan to continue. So it's really awesome to be able to meet every day and be able to progress every day. Thank you. And just a few opportunities in and outside of school. So one big thing is we have one big concert in the, the fall, fall, our Christmas concert, and then one big concert in the spring for our spring concert. Those are our in-school opportunities. And our out-school opportunities um, are Soul Ensemble, which happens in March. And if you do well enough there, you can go to State Soul Ensemble. Next thing is Honors Band and Choir, which is a select few students from each ensemble that go and then sing with other, sing or play with other students from our conference. That is one of my favorite things to experience because the kids love it and they're, really excited about it and they're really talented. So that's a lot of fun. Um, and then something that we tried this year, we did a little bit of caroling with our high school at one of our events at Christmas, which was really fun. But one of the biggest things that I am most excited about this program is all of the growth that we've been doing. Um, we have already gained several students in band and we've been continuing to grow in choir. So I'm excited about not only bodies being in the room, but the excitement that's around um, all the people in the room and what we've been able to accomplish, even this year with all of the craziness going on. Um, and I'm excited about the growth about orchestra. Thank you, Hannah. We are excited as well. We're looking <laughs> forward to it. Next up is Kevin Gesh. Hi, my name is uh, Kevin Gesh, and I'll be speaking also for Trisha Meyer as the uh, other social studies and English teacher. That's a dangerous thing, but I will speak for someone else. I graduated from this school in 1979. Yes, 1979. Um, I give you biographical information because we're so much a part of each other's lives here at the school that I think that's important to know. I have a degree in history one in philosophy, one in education. I have an English minor. I can reasonably well speak English and I can function in German, Dutch, and Afrikaans. Those also help for understanding language. Um, I married uh, my wife, Gwen, 40 years ago, or she married me, whatever. I have four daughters, two sons, all of whom came through uh, the, the high school part here. Uh, I have 16 granddaughters and yeah, the three grandsons and I were lonely and afraid and we just hide. Um, our social studies program <clears throat> study our human response to God's call to obedient living. So God puts it out there. Live justly before me, live creatively before me, live bold me, boldly before me. And so as we study history, we're looking at it through the eyes of how God would wish us to live and how we often uh, have fallen short. And then we honor the successes as well. Uh, the social studies curriculum includes geography, world history, uh, American history, government and economics, and then advanced placement history. Um, I'm not sure if I'm forgetting anything there, Anne, you can jump in at another time if I have. 
Our English curriculum requires four full years of English and you have to pass all four. Uh, English nine and 10 are general courses uh, exposing students to many different genres and developing and building on skills uh, that have come up through their grades. Uh, in your junior year, uh, American literature and British literature in grade 12 take a more historical study of the sources of our rather unique language. And we study this under the umbrella of God's call to use language and communication in all of their forms to bring honor and depth and clarity and creativity uh, to the God who calls himself the word. We've also had a lot of variety. I mentioned tonight a few times uh, discovery term, just my end of it. In seven years, I've done novels into movies, the Holocaust, local history, Greek mythology, Norse mythology, uh, some intensive Shakespeare study, and uh, this year, a totally different topic, the Battle of the Bulge. Uh, I also assist Mr. Balkum with National Honor Society. Um, the pro same program it's been for many of you, I assume, in your youth. I believe I can offer you help in learning how to walk closer with God. I, on behalf of all of us here, Advice on how to be a clearer biblical thinker. Lots of advice on how to help develop a clear spoken and written expression. I can also offer you regular prayer. I think this school will provide you with what you and your, your child would need to develop a notion of not just a job, but a calling. And maybe that would be the workplace or provide a great background for enro enrollment in a technical school, and maybe a well-rounded education for developing your Christian mind and heart at a college or university. My single, the single best decision my parents ever made for me, uh, of course, I was, raised in a, I was raised in a Christian environment, Christian church and all that, was to tell me I was coming to Sheboygan Christian High School. They did not ask my opinion on that one. And what that has done, that that decision has uh, affected me positively. It altered my faith and intellectual life, and it still is, quite frankly. So our calling as a school is to assist you, parents, in, in helping your child develop into a God-honoring, spirit-filled Christ follower, intellectually, socially, and spiritually. And I believe we have the programs and the people to do just that. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Should we just end right there? No, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, we have one more teacher before the rest of the webinar. Um, we have Dave Veldhorst, who would like to share with you next. Thanks, I think we could probably much just end right there, but um, <clears throat> my name is Dave Veltorst. Um, I'm a 1982 graduate of uh, Christian High School. I grew up in the suburbs of Cedar Grove, which basically means I grew up in the sticks. Uh, but then I spent about 15 years uh, living in Tokyo and Bangkok. And so uh, what that means is that I know what it's like to grow up rural uh, in this area. Um, and yet I also know what it's like to live in a city where I'm surrounded by Buddhists and uh, people that are very diverse and uh, do not have a love for the Lord. And I think the way that that helps me in the classroom is it gives me a lot of understanding that students uh, come into the classroom at a lot of different points. Uh, some kids are coming into the room, um, having grown up in a Christian family, going to church, having a deep understanding of scripture already. And then we have others coming in the classroom that um, have very little biblical background. And uh, it gives me a deep um, it's a deep honor and also a love of mine to just take students where they are and um, develop a culture within the classroom where um, wherever you're at, um, you are accepted and uh, you will have a voice. And uh, I will do my best uh, to uh, listen to where you're at, what are your objections to the faith, what are your doubts, what are your concerns, and then uh, go to the Bible and uh, see how the Bible gives us a really wonderful worldview, uh, a remarkable uh, set of lenses to look at our world, where then we can become, what I have here is my deep hope, that we can become uh, people that are gracious uh, engagers in our world, 
where we're people who are winsome uh, truth tellers, where we want to seek uh, justice in our world, and where we really love to um, develop a heart that worships God. So all of those things are those habits and those practices are pretty much going to infuse uh, each of the classes that I try to teach. So whether it's uh, Old Testament or New Testament uh, doctrine, uh, ethics, uh, apologetics, or maybe in an advanced class, um, those are the habits and the practices that we're trying to really cultivate within uh, the classroom. So uh, it's my joy to not only develop, uh, I think, the mind, uh, but also to see uh, students in the classroom really develop a heart uh, for going out in the community and um, learning how to apply uh, that biblical understanding to real life situations. So the picture there of uh, Sharon Richardson Hospice uh, coming to speak as we were talking about death and life issues and ethics, uh, just trying to work through what does it mean as a Christian, um, if you were in that situation, uh, speaking to a loved one, what does it look like uh, to have a good uh, theology and a good ethic in the area of life and death? So it's really a tremendous honor. Uh, one of my joys of hearing my peers is that I think there's a lot of collaboration. So even when I heard Mr. Gesh talk about wanting to develop a biblical way, a biblical mind, um, it's really a joy, I think, to see a lot of collaboration within the classroom where kids are coming out of English class, hearing how God is in that poem or in that essay, and then coming right into my class and saying the same thing. This is what God does. This is where the narrative of his great story shows up everywhere. So it's really a joy uh, to be able to work in a setting where whether it's art, science, uh, English, history, uh, there's just a lot of collaboration uh, with showing how one story uh, impacts everything. So it's really a joy uh, to work uh, at Christian High. Thank you, Dave. Um, so tonight you have heard uh, a few of our teachers. Of course, we have more, um, but we would be here for other here for hours otherwise. So, and we chose a few to just give you some highlights. But if there are any programs that you had questions about that have not been covered tonight, um, you can put it in the Q and A uh, box below, or you can follow up with us afterwards. Um, but before we move forward, I really do want to say I know. Our teachers have spoken about their, their hopes and their kind of mission within their classrooms. Um, but just from me being on the staff side, I, I truly have witnessed a lot of these teachers um, visiting with students outside of class regularly before or after school. I've seen them praying with students. I've seen students go up to them to talk about really tough life issues that they're going through. So. I really want to reiterate the, the fact that these teachers are not just teaching a subject, um, that they're there to walk through the whole being of each student um, holistically and that they care about them and all the things that they're pursuing and caring about. So um, that's something that I've witnessed and I hope you guys will have the opportunity to experience that in the next couple of years. Um, but uh, this is not really my part to talk, so I am going to shift over now to our extracurricular programs. So we will have Shane Hansen kick that off right now. Thank you and good evening, everybody. My name is Shane Hansen and I'm the athletic director here at Sheboygan Christian School. And it's a privilege to be with you this evening and a blessing to serve here at SCS. I only have a few minutes this evening, so I'll get right into my content. Um, I wanted to share with you that as members of the Big East Conference and the WIAA, we offer sports programs in the fall, winter, and spring seasons. In the fall, we offer football, volleyball, and boys soccer. In the winter, we offer boys and girls basketball. And in the spring, we offer baseball, golf, girls soccer, and track and field. And uh, it's really an exciting time to be a part of SES Athletics. And uh, one of the main reasons that I'm, I'm very excited about it um, right now is that I think a lot of schools, many schools offer athletics, um, but right now we're really focusing on ways that we can offer uh, Christian-based athletics. And, and one way that we're really striving to do that is by being a part of, um, we were invited to be a part of the Coaching for Transformation pilot program through Dort University this year. We're one of 12 um, schools in the country that were invited to take part in this program. And similar to how we utilize teaching for transformation in the classroom, 
uh, we are now working to implement coaching for transformation into our athletics programs. And to give you a really quick overview of, of what this looks like and how we're implementing this into athletics, we combine our uh, school mission, which was uh, discussed earlier, with our athletics department mission, which is something that we um, really uh, crafted this year and, and, and fine-tuned uh, from previous iterations into what it is today, uh, which is SCS Athletics gives student athletes a place to develop spiritually, emotionally, cognitively, and physically to fulfill their God-given athletic potential and to glorify God both individually and as a team. Um, and so the next step in, in the coaching for transformation process was to develop an athletic department vision. And so for us, uh, we just wanted to look to scripture and, and see if we could find a way to implement our school and athletic department missions and bring that together into a athletic department vision. And so in scripture, in, uh, in scripture we decided um, 1 Timothy 4.8 was just a, a wonderful verse that fit with where we're looking to go um, with our athletics programs. And so that verse reads, for physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. And so really that's what we're striving to, to work in organizing our thoughts and our programs and systems um, through the Coaching for Transformation programming to help us implement these missions and pursue this vision in our athletics programs. So for us, um, in, the, in the next slide, we have our our four transformative principles listed, and this is specific to our school in working through our own individual mission um, and vision statement and, and looking what would really fit well at SCS and in combining our where we're trying to go with, with our programs and athletics and, and do it from a Christian-based um, perspective. And so we came up with the four pillars, if you will, uh, our four transformative principles, and, and as we're looking to make that kingdom impact through athletics would be competing, encouraging humility and training. Um, and so we're working really hard to implement these into our program and we'll continue the work to fine tune our coaching for transformation um, plan as we work through this pilot program this school year um, and, and really looking to take that next step with this program um, over the summer and moving forward with our athletics programs. Again, I don't have much time this evening, but I'd be happy to share more about coaching for transformation um, or athletics department overall, if you would have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Shane. Uh, in addition to athletics here, uh, we do have some other programs that are more artistic and academic based. So uh, Mrs. Uh, Ann Seenweik, we'll start talking about that. Thank you, Becca. Um, this is probably one of my favorite things to talk about because it gives us a chance to really recognize and celebrate um, the expression of all of the things our students are learning throughout the year. So we have a lot of different ways that our students can get involved um, in extracurricular programs. Um, there's a few listed on the PowerPoint for you. And actually there's a picture here of our yearbook team who has, um, I think three or four consecutive years now has won the National Yearbook um, Program of Excellence for their work on the yearbook. Um, but in addition to that, we have um, a drama team and they typically do a fall play and a spring play. Um, the fall play, we believe we want students to be involved in as many different extracurricular programs as possible. So um, when students are in um, multi-sports and still wanna be in a play, we, we work really hard to be able to allow them to either be a part of the fall play or the spring play in addition to athletics. Um, we also have a forensics team that um, competes in the middle of winter. That typically runs, that season runs usually December through April. We've had many teams um, go to state and in the, in the forensics program, although it's virtual this year, they do get to compete individually or in groups and um, they compete with different schools all throughout the state. In addition to that, we have um, other academic kind of teams. Our, our math team goes to our the annual Lakeland math meet each year. We also have the Acuity Business Challenge. Um, each year we have a team that goes to compete and our students have done really well um, with that. Um, in terms of arts, we have our students participate in the Roar West um, art show and that's a part of the Big East 
art uh, show, as well as we have had in the past, our students um, display art at the University of Wisconsin Sheboygan campus. Uh, and they compete also there for, um, they have different viewers and different um, uh, people that come and celebrate the work there. Uh, in addition to that, we have opportunities for our students to lead worship. Uh, once a week, our students have uh, chapel for praise and worship, and our chapel team plans that. They lead it, and they um, will always, under the direction of our, their advisor, Chris Hendricks, do a wonderful job coming up with the themes and ways that our students can praise and worship. We also have student council which students each year will, they have to apply for student council and student council members get voted in and they provide opportunities for students to gather socially, to become a part of events and really work to drive up school spirit. Uh, Mr. Gesh mentioned a National Honor Society. National Honor Society spends one day each year arranging students for a service day. Typically in spring, all of our students, we start the morning with a prayer walk and then our students provide a service to a variety of organizations throughout our county. And I believe Hannah Garside mentioned um, honors choir and band. That's one time a year in addition to solo and ensemble competitions. So we have opportunities for music presentation as well. So as you can see, there are a lot of opportunities for students to be able to express themselves and use their gifts and talents that God has given them. And we truly enjoy uh, celebrating those different ways that students can get involved. And, and we're excited that all of our students can participate in more than one extracurricular activity. Thank Thanks, Becca. Thank you. So we, you guys have made it to the Q&A time. Uh, we're making great time right now and um, we're excited to see we've got uh, quite a few questions actually uh, stacking up right now. And it's not too late to submit a question right now. Some of you actually joined after we started. So um, just for you guys at the bottom, there's a Q&A box. And if you wanna submit a question right now or in the next five minutes, you can. Um, but I'm actually going to hand this part off to Rudy, um, who's going to look at some of the questions that have come through and divvy them out. Thanks. Good questions, everybody. I'll, I'll, uh, you got good questions in advance, so good, good work. Um, first question uh, comes to us from Dawn. Uh, what community or outside organizations are SCS high school students involved in as an extension of high school? Um, so again, outside uh, organizations um, that our students are involved in. I, I think I'll uh, I can on, Rudy. Yeah, throw, throw that right back to Ann, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, as, as I saw that question come in, I started jotting some down and there's pro it's probably going to be some that I missed along the way. Um, we partner with the Salvation Army, Anchor of Hope, uh, Testoris D. Dios. And you can see, I don't know if Rudy has me up on the screen, but actually right behind me, I purposely sat here because um, it shows the work our Spanish students are doing to support Testoros, Testor, Tesoros de Dios um, in Nicaragua. Um, Teen Mops and Mops are also an organization that we work with. Love Inc. Potter's Place has been a recent one that we have started to figure out how we can help in their advocacy for homeless. Baby Care, Pine Haven, and uh, as you heard, Chris Hendricks mention Seven Bridges in Atlanta. Um, as I said earlier, one day a year, we actually go out physically uh, to these organizations and more actually, food banks and all oh, there's, there's a big list and all of our advice advisory groups actually go out to, to do service. But these are just different groups that we typically partner with in some way throughout the year. Good question. Um, another, uh, another question from Dawn. Uh, this one's from Mr. Hendricks. Um, uh, you're saying ninth graders get one full year of biology, a half year of chemistry, a half year of physics. Don't a lot of colleges require three full years of science? 
yes, uh, we, we require three full years of science here. Um, I mentioned that after the sophomore year, students will have met all the standards, but then uh, some are more into the physical sciences and might take you know, advanced physics or advanced chemistry, and some are more into the life sciences and might take advanced biology. Um, but either way, all students are required to take three years of science. Okay, great, thanks. Um, here's another one from, uh, from Don here. I know that students uh, in public high schools are able to take college classes at LTC or UW Sheboygan for free through various programs. The public high school pays for the classes, et cetera. I'm, ex I'm assuming SCS isn't able to do that because it's a non-government funded school. Is that correct? I guess I'll throw that uh, to Ann or Bryce and maybe you want to mention again our, uh, our dual credit uh, program. We had, we had another um, question uh, later on about uh, can juniors and seniors take uh, dual credit um, uh, classes? So maybe merging two questions there. I can take that one, Rudy. Um, we, I don't think anybody has mentioned the Youth Apprenticeship Program. Uh, we partner with LTC to provide students job opportunities and apprenticeships. And those job opportunities range uh, from marketing and business to engineering to culinary and hospitality, farming. Uh, with L that program through LTC, students do take LTC courses and those courses are free for students if they are in that program. And that's a wonderful program that is offered for both juniors and seniors and they are paid and they also get credit not only for college, but also for school, high school. In addition to that, we do offer dual credit program through um, with Grand Canyon University. We partner with Grand Canyon University as well as Dort University and LTC for dual credit options. And students typically must have a 3.0 grade point average in order to participate in those programs. Thanks, here's one for uh, Mrs. Garside. Uh, can a student who plays piano select whether she joins up with band, choir, or orchestra, or is piano better suited for choir or orchestra? Also, she would be new to keyboarding. Is there an opportunity for her to learn that format? Yes, so because we are such a small school, we have the opportunity to be able to take basically whatever you've got and we're gonna make it work. So whatever she wants to participate in, we're gonna make it work. Um, it might be better in choir if she wants to work on accompanying. Um, orchestra's brand new, we can figure that out. I know in years past they've had some pianists um, in band before I was there, but like I said, we're gonna make it work. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by keyboarding. Um, if you mean brand new to piano, I don't teach piano lessons, but um, we can talk about that uh, more specifically later if you have more questions about that. And Hannah, I believe the keyboarding, I, I remember actually talking to Don about this. Um, I had suggested possibly keyboarding for chapel team. So I think that's where the keyboarding came into play, just because that is something that we really love uh, to have in chapel. So. Chris, you're in. Chris, you're in charge of that. Maybe, maybe you could talk through. You know what, kind of how you, how you go through the process of you know staffing. You know staffing uh, the uh, the chapel team. Uh, you know with the students and uh, you know their unique abilities. Yeah, I think it's um, it's incredible that we we have the opportunity to to worship together twice a week. We we gather as a, a student body and staff on Tuesday mornings and Friday mornings. The Tuesday mornings are um, for student-led worship, and we have uh, several leaders. We have uh, many different ways you can be involved. Uh, we, we're always looking for musicians. Um, guitar players and piano players are, are very helpful. Uh, we need percussionists. Uh, we, have, um, we have a lot of uh, different instruments, I guess you could play, but we also need leaders who are willing to help plan. We have some people that uh, don't know how to play any instruments, and they're really valuable leaders in our team. They help with the organizing, uh, picking out the songs, the, the working with the themes and finding scriptures at work. Um, some people just put music together. Uh, some people help with setup. Some people help with sound. 
Uh, so there, there's a lot of different ways you can be involved. And um, if, if you want to be plugged in, we'll make it happen for sure. Thanks. Uh, here's one uh, regarding math. My eighth grader is currently, do, currently doing pre-algebra. I'm assuming she'd take algebra as a ninth grader. Is she going to be behind starting off as a ninth grader in algebra? My other question is how many years of math does she need to graduate? What's the typical layout for math per year? Thanks. And uh, this one actually fits perfectly. Uh, Becca mentioned, you know, we didn't fit every program. So uh, apologies to Mr. Balkama, who is the, uh, the chair of our math program. And uh, we, we do have math. Math is really important and uh, we do have it. So uh, Anna Bryce, you want to take this one on sort of the math scope and sequence? Yeah, so I can take this one, Rudy. Rudy. Uh, we do offer pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra two, geometry, uh, functions and stats, calculus, and AP calculus, and pre-calculus. So we do offer different levels of math for different um, needs for students. We do require three years of math. And we usually recommend if students are college bound that they certainly have algebra two in that mix. Thanks. Um, I have uh, I have one question that um, is typically asked. It's not in our uh, not in our group here, but um, uh, typically asked. So a uh, number of people have heard about our uh, building project. Um, so we have a, a large building project going on, and you'll. Those of you that uh, are getting the um, video uh, emailed to you, you'll you'll see that after the uh, after the meeting here. Um, but maybe uh, we could have someone speak to the um, the building project uh, that is due to be uh, in place by next fall, and what that uh, looks like specifically for our high school students, and kind of how how we see that as advantageous. I guess I didn't ask anyone that question, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put Bryce on the spot. Mr. Drews, throw you on the spot, go. Yes, uh, so we, we have a enormous building project uh, in process right now in which we are adding uh, classrooms for 3K through fifth grade and multiple classrooms at each grade level. Uh, that will be complete at the end of, uh, well, at the beginning of this coming school year. So sometime in, uh, this summer will be complete. Um, we're also putting on uh, the shell of some middle school classrooms uh, because uh, the middle school continues to grow, uh, which as a result, the high school is going to continue to grow as those students move up. Uh, we've made uh, several changes this year in order to create more classrooms at the high school um, to incorporate or to allow the middle school to be up here. Uh, we've also created a uh, student uh, commons area uh, for high school students. Um, and I'm not sure if that's going to be in the video or anything like that, but um, it's, uh, it's a great area for the kids just to kind of uh, uh, experience kind of like what a, a college setting would be a, of a common area where they can uh, hang out uh, and uh, do some work, whether it's uh, before school, during break, or even after school. Uh, so that uh, project, I think, uh, uh, is, is just a, a, a tremendous step in Christian education in Sheboygan County, as uh, will be the only Christian school with a 3K through 12 campus. Uh, so we're very, very excited about that. And could you maybe talk about some of the opportunities to that point? Uh, you know, we've been, as, uh, as Ann mentioned, kind of in our history, we've been, you know, really for the last six years, really thinking deeply and praying deeply about what God's will would be for our school community. Um, and so we've had these two campuses, and that means that people like Ann and Bryce are always driving back and forth from campuses. So there's some... Uh, some minor inconveniences we're looking forward to, uh, to uh, abolishing, uh, but, but we're not doing it for minor inconveniences. We're, we're doing it for the, the amazing opportunities we have. So I know, Ann, you had some really big excitement about um, a building that's really intentionally created uh, to house preschool through high school and, and each age group, each developmental age group kind of has their own you know, wing within the building. So it's sort of schools within the school, but there's all kinds of opportunities for um, partnerships and other activities that we really see as advantageous for our high school students. 
Yes, this is something I'm really excited about, and I think others are as well. As I indicated earlier in our mission, we're all about community, and we believe that happens within the whole school community as well. One of the things that we are most looking forward to is being able to have our students learn and work and be in community together, um, not only through academics, um, being able to share projects, cross-curricular, cross-grade level projects that we do for the community, but also mentorship opportunities. Our, our students in the past, our high school students have done Bible studies with our middle school students. Our middle school students have gone down to read and play with and have lunch with our elementary students. We believe mentorship is part of um, the, the calling that we have as a community to be there for each other and to disciple and to not only learn together, but also to grow, grow uh, with each other in community and, and in the Lord. Right, and uh, one, one last question. Um, uh, this comes to us from Grace. Uh, in today's world, I must ask, what sort of security is there in this particular school building. So I'll, I'll take uh, the, first, the first piece of that. Um, that's a huge reason why we're building. Um, you know, school buildings, the, the uh, school building we have on the north side right now is 1950s era. And uh, the high school, middle school building that we have right now, uh, late 60s, early 70s. And um, there's a lot that has changed in school architecture uh, over especially the last uh, couple of decades. And a big piece of uh, the, the building plans that are in place is that um, student safety and security. That's obviously our first calling as, as educators is um, you know, uh, the, the physical, emotional, and uh, well, well-being of students. So Anne, I know you, you've been, Anne sits in on all of the building uh, meetings. So you're in onto the nitty gritty level of keys and locks and cameras and doors and uh, all of the many, many, many uh, points of minutia uh, in security. But may maybe you could talk a little more on, uh, you know, where we're at today and, and maybe where we're going uh, for next year. But it's a great question, Grace. Certainly. Next year, we will have just one access door for students to go in and out of. And that is for very specific reasons regarding security. In addition to that, we, have, we are building a brand new front entrance so that our um, visitors have to get buzzed in. And not only do they have to get buzzed in, but they also have to get buzzed out to even enter the school building. We have um, many different cameras throughout the building. Right now at the high school, we have a camera in every square inch of the building. And that will continue throughout the whole school next year. Entrances are um, minimal and we will have very specific access, not even staff members will have access to all the outside doors. So it is gonna be a lockdown scenario. All of our, uh, our doors are figured for uh, magnetic locks and um, automatic closures for if we have a, an emergency situation, it'll be one button and it'll close down full wings. And of course, our, our teachers are trained for various crisis situations. So we are looking forward to next year's increased security with our new building. Thanks, Sam. And uh, Becca, I know you wanted to uh, take us through uh, some next steps. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you so much, uh, teachers and administration, for your time tonight and sharing more about our school. Um, we're very passionate about it, and hopefully, hopefully you were able to see that. Um, but we just wanted to close tonight with just a couple notes. I'm sure that after you leave tonight, you will probably come up with a list of more questions. Um, so be sure you should have our contact information already, but if you don't, um, we will send you a follow-up email this week. Um, so be expecting a, an email with a link of the recording for this webinar that you can watch again, or you can share with your friends or family. We will also send you that student tour video link. I know that's very important and we had hoped to show you that tonight, um, but we'll definitely send that in email. 
We will also, as I promised, provide you with a waiver code for when you submit an application for enrollment. Um, we, there typically is a $50 application fee, and for anyone who attends our virtual events, they will get that waived. And then um, I just want you guys to understand too, we know that this webinar did not show you the full school building. So if you have not had an opportunity to walk through here, and physically meet people and see people, um, see our programs in action. We are doing in-person tours in a safe manner right now. So if that's a follow-up that you would be interested in, just let me know. We also are doing virtual campus tours as well, where I can literally carry my laptop around and show you around if you're more comfortable that way. And then lastly, um, you might be wondering, we didn't quite talk about the financial piece of things. And the reason for that is we know it's a private matter. So we would rather have that conversation in person or over the phone with you so that we can lay out all of our options. But I did list a couple of the options in this PowerPoint for you. Those letters probably don't mean a lot to you right now. Um, but what they stand for is the Wisconsin Parental Choice Program which we can talk to you about that further, but it's an opportunity where if your student is eligible, they could receive fully paid for tuition to attend Sheboygan Christian School now through senior year, fully paid for tuition. Um, so there's more details to talk through on that, but we can talk another time. We also have a special needs scholarship program. If your student um, has an IEP, um, that's something that you could talk to us about because we do have a scholarship that could also pay for their tuition to attend here as well. And then if those aren't applicable to your family, we also have other financial aid options. So um, without keeping you guys past 8.15 tonight, um, that's kind of the next steps that we have in place for you guys. So you can watch for an email from us. Um, and really what I would like to do before we close tonight I would love to just close the night in prayer. Um, I know there's a big decision ahead of you. Maybe you've made that decision already, um, but I just hope that we were able to help you with that tonight. So let's close in prayer together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to meet together virtually. Lord, we know it's not quite the same as seeing each other face to face and um, having that dialogue back and forth, but we're so grateful for technology and the ability to do this. Um, God, we thank you so much for um, Sheboygan Christian School, for the staff here and how much care and passion they have. And um, God, we just pray for the mission um, to impact students and to prepare them for service in, in your world. We just pray for that mission to continue and to grow and um, God, Lord, if these families that are attending tonight are to be a part of that mission at Sheboygan Christian School, Lord, I just pray that you make it very clear and evident to them and um, that you give them peace. Um, so Heavenly Father, tonight there might be a lot more questions. There might be peace already. Um, but Lord, whatever next steps you have for these parents and students, um, we just thank you for uh, having all of it in your hands. and. Um, that even if um, things might not make sense to us, Lord, we know you have a plan. And Lord, we just pray if, if Sheboygan Christian School is a part of that plan, um, we pray that we can make a great impact on these students and families. Um, so thank you again for this night together. And um, please bless each of us as we head out. In your son's name, amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for attending. And we will talk soon.